What's your story, Tony? Um, and I can maybe tell you a, a few of the things that I went through. Yeah, um, my, my, myself. Okay. Are you sitting comfortably? Let's begin. Okay. <laughs> as, as I said, I mean, I wanted to make this a little bit more, more personal rather than, than theoretical. So, with a story, we always begin with once upon a time, don't we? And once upon a time, I actually looked this young. <laughs> Uh, and I did, I did actually uh, start my career here, here in Turkey. I was a very young teacher when I, uh, when I uh, arrived. Um, and one of the things that I found, like in, in, in many countries, is a, a lot of students were saying things like this to me. You know, they were actually saying, I, I know English really well, it's just that I can't speak. And this was uh, one of the things that, that, that particularly interested me because I thought, if, if that's a real need that people are talking about. Yes, Fatima, I do speak Turkish. <laughs> See, I'm actually, I'm learning to use the chat. <laughs> um, so th th this actually became a, a, a big priority for me in, in the beginning. One of the things I also found was, was a situation that's characterized by this lovely cartoon from from John Marks. Just, just have a quick look at this. Now I often say if you if you go through this dialogue, I mean I've I've, I've been a native speaker for almost fifty years now, and I don't think I have ever had a conversation like this. But when I began teaching, I realised that a lot of students did did talk in this particular way, and it it, it surprised me. So that idea of of, of speaking um, became very important earlier on for me. Steal away, steal away. <laughs> um, it, it, it did actually prioritize, uh, it, it became quite a, a big priority in, 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 in my head, but particularly in, in Turkey where I was working. And, and, the, and the other thing that sort of struck me, oh, some of our graphics haven't come out here, don't, don't worry, um, was that, that little quote here uh, from John Rogers. Now, now, this actually came out in the year I started teaching. Um, and this was the environment that I was coming into, and I, I, I was picking up on, on, on those messages that, you know, it's, it's not necessarily, you know, the, the, the teaching that we do that needs to be the focus, um, because a lot of us are, 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 are teaching to death, uh, but still a lot of our students are not learning. So the, the idea that started to form in, in my mind was, was this idea here that, you know, teaching and learning was, was important. We just had to get the right kind of balance right. So the idea is that we emphasize the, the learning side of things more than the, the teaching. And that, that led me to, to look for ways um, to come up with tools that might actually help students do more learning on their own when, when I wasn't around. Again, though, um, I wasn't there at the time. Now, because we talked about looking for ways to improving uh, to, to improve uh, speaking, you know, obviously I came back to okay, Jace. I think we're going to have to switch over slides now. Yeah, is that right? Okay, I'm there. <laughs> um, and because of my my first exposure to 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 phonetics and and on that that huge great book I told you about. I, I did kind of realize that, that Disraeli might be right and, and what was required uh, was for me to, to, to do a lot of seeing, a lot of suffering and a lot of studying myself. Um, and I, I actually, I think, I think this is true and I think we, we, we underestimate this, um, the, the, the importance of the work we put into it and, and something, of our, something that our students do. With PRON, however, the three things, whoop, I double click there, sorry, my fault. Um, the, the three areas that kind of 
came up for, for, for me, um, once I, I, I sort of realized that that book was not going to help me too much, was the idea of, of, of focusing on, on sound. So how could I help my students get better at sounds? How could I help them with, with, with words? Um, and also the, the connected speech side of things as well. Now that, that actually made it easier for me as I was getting into um, IPA. And, and, and that's actually how, how I started. Um, obviously, the, the, the sounds um, that we can, we, we, we can sort of use are, are, are going to be critical here. Obviously, we've got a, a, a fair few of the, the, the vowels here. The diphthongs, the double vowels. Now, now remember, a lot of these ones—they're not—they're um, not actually vowels per se. They're, they're vowel sounds, if you will. Um, and the same with, with with the consonants that we have here. Um, and the the the, the point there—they're not consonants. They're they're consonant sounds that come through. So, for for example, here with um, p pin, p bin. You know, a lot of them are the, are the sounds that we're making rather than the, the alphabet. Now, this, this is actually how I started myself. Remember, this was in the, the dinosaur age. We didn't even have the internet. <laughs> so what, what I actually did, rather than use that big book, um, I actually used dictionaries myself. I, I started to use um, a, a dictionary to, to, to sort of teach myself. And one of the first things I... I I sort of did with this was realize, you know, for, for, for myself that we, we were talking about the, the, the differences between letters and the difference between sounds. And I was, I was very honest with my students at the, the, the beginning. I, I'd actually said to them that, look, I'm, I'm learning this myself. And, and, and this was one of the first examples that I sort of came across, the, the, the cat and catch idea. One, uh, because we, we wanted to, to, to focus on the number of letters that we had and the, and the sounds and raise that awareness. So what, what I was doing is I, I, I was going through this awareness raising my process myself and I was actually saying to students um, that, you know, I'm learning this as we go along. Let, let's try and do it together and actually experiment with it and see if it helps us learn. Yeah. So that was my first step. I can see a few people talking about charts, and I'll, I'll, I'll come on to that in, in, in a minute. Um, my interest, though, was obviously with, with, with words. As I uh, started to learn more about IPA, I was obviously a lot more interested in the things that were very different. Um, and, you know, obviously, uh, a, a number of the symbols that we don't traditionally, uh, well, we, we don't use in the regular alphabet, yeah? Um, and, and this actually drew my, my interest. And so what I actually found is I, I actually started with a, a lot of these less common symbols. And this was something that worked really well with, with, with students. They, they were a lot more interested in, in the fun symbols, as you will, especially things like the ch. The, 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 the church, chin, chat idea. Um, and, and that was actually something that was good. But as we started to do this, we began to see that it was a number of these symbols themselves, um, which is where we had problems. So by, by focusing on the things that were slightly different, um, that was actually something that was, was quite useful for, for an interest point of view. Um, you can see the, the, the same with some of the, um, the vowel sounds that come through. Um, again, focusing on the ones that were, 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 were different were, were actually quite motivating for us. Yeah. Now, the big, the big one for me um, was this wonderful uh sound. Now, this, this was the one that actually led me to move from words much more the schwa yeah that's it that's it uh -huh. if we have a look attack maker doctor uh, the sound yeah uh -huh. the schwa yeah lots of lots of people are putting that up mm -hmm. okay now it was it was this one as as i started to get better at the the, the word level that led me to the ideas on the the connected speech a lot more for example um sentences like this that we, we were sort of working with and actually using a lot of those 
um, as, as a starting point with, with students, recognizing how they were connected and also recognizing that it was the schwa sound that was doing yeah, a lot of that connecting for us. Let me give you another example. I think this was one of my favorite examples that I, I, I sort of came up with. Just have a quick look at this one here. Now here we're going to have a number of schwa sounds, the magic schwa. How many schwa sounds, uh sounds, are we going to be able to find in this? Just a quick look. Four. Tatlana says four. Oh, Slaka, Fatma, five, five. At least seven from Patricia. Absolutely, seven. <laughs> the leisure center is closed for a private function. Now, again, um, because, you know, when I, I, I was first starting out, I actually focused on the high priority issues that came through. And this one was, was amazing. And we, we actually started to do a lot of our sentences uh, as, as we were working, actually d doing what we call schwa spotting. Um, and students absolutely, absolutely loved it. And, and, and this is where a lot of them were, were, were looking for as many models as they could find themselves, um, listening to TV, bringing sentences. And again, that, that was the point that actually got us moving into um, the, the, the connected speech side, side of things. So hopefully you can sort of see through those uh, that, that what I was going through is I, because I was learning myself, yeah, I was actually gradually building up these things with my students. And the thing that I found most fascinating was the fact that students really appreciated that I was telling them that I was also a learner at the same time. And, and that really, early on in my, my career, um, re really gave me that idea of uh, the importance of, of community and actually showing students that I wasn't necessarily an expert, but I was actually going through a learning program myself. And I, I, I think students really respected that. And, and that's something I, I tried to keep throughout um, most of my career as well. Um, recently, I, I, well, I've, I've put up a few uh, video links here. We won't have time to, to sort of look at them, but I, I hope maybe at the end of the session you can, you can sort of have a look. Um, there, there, there's one site called uh, Rachel's English, and, and I think a couple of people mentioned it as, as, as well. Um, now, now, this is uh, an English teacher, Rachel, who does a lot of really great work on, on prod and, and has an amazing number of, of, of videos here. You, you, you can see the link down here. Um, and in this particular one, she does something really good where she takes a couple of very simple sentences and actually walk students through them in terms of how they can look at the connected speech themselves. Um, and it's those, yeah, um, it's, it's those kind of videos that are, are particularly uh, useful to actually go through. So Rachel, okay, great. Uh -huh. um, another resource I, I definitely look at people uh, following up with. Okay, trip over. I think for, the thing for me is a lot of you started to talk about the chart earlier on. As I said, I mean, I, I, was, I, I was learning as I was going along. And I, I didn't actually uh, come across the chart because, as, as I said, I was doing a lot of dictionary work myself. But what I did start to notice was the, the, the groupings of the, the certain vowel sounds as they, as they came through. And so when I did actually come across um, the chart, um, I was actually looking at how these sounds were, were, were much more physical in themselves, not, not only working on isolated sounds, but actually looking at the linkages between them. I mean, the, 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 the typical one that we, we, we sort of look at here is, is, is ship or, or, or sheep. Um, in fact, I think, I think there was a book and, and, entitled this as well. Um, so there's, the, there's a lot of the, the, the minimal pair type activities that you get here. Um, a really good good one for me was, was actually my wife. My, my wife is, is not a native speaker. She's actually Turkish. Um, and, and when I was young, she, she was actually learning 
English as well. And, and we had a, a, a lot of fun with some of these. I mean, what, one, of, one of our favorites was, was this one here that my wife used to say, yes, Patricia, I know I will be careful. <laughs> um, but this, this was actually interesting because in, in, in my personal life, uh, my wife unable, uh, and I were able to sort of joke about this. But when we actually talked about um, these kind of minimal pairs with students, we started to realize um, that embarrassment was a key factor for a lot of people because it was that idea of public face. So while my, my, my wife and I might be joking about a lot of these things, they, they were actually critical to a lot of students. And actually having a look at a few examples like this um, really helped raise awareness of the importance of it. Yeah, I, I think a lot of people <laughs> use this one as well. Uh, but there, there's, there, there's a few others. But this, this was the thing for me, is that um, I, I was also uh, looking at how students were feeling about these things. And actually helping students get in touch with the, the, the importance of m making communication mistakes like this was, was a, a good way to keep them uh, motivated. All right, as I said, uh, what I was doing, because I, I was working with pairs and sounds, I actually started to see more of the, the relationships between them. Before, yes, before I actually discovered the chart. Now, this actually is the original chart that I, I, I found. It's a, it's, it's a handwritten one. And, and for years, I never actually realized who put this one together. But the beauty of it was, was, was something that I'd been, okay, Chuck, no worries, take care. The, the, the beauty of it was is that the, the grouping of the, of the vowel sounds, as you could see here, is, is, is very similar to um, the mouth itself, the physical structure that we have. So a lot of the sounds here are at the, the, the front of the mouth. As we move back, the ones that are, are, are back at the, the, the throat. The, the same it was, was, was true when we looked at what we call the, the, the double vowels, the diphthongs. Again, exactly the, the, the same pattern. So for me, the chart itself, yeah, yeah, th this is the British one, Ricardo. We'll, we'll sort of go on to that in a, in a second. Um, the, the, the one that was, was interesting is, is suddenly, um, when I discovered the chart myself, it all came together that I've been working so hard on, on individual work um, and, 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 and sounds because I hadn't got this that suddenly what, what we actually had was, was a chart that allowed me to explain it a lot more about the, the physical processes uh, that students can, can use. Obviously, I, I won't go into, into it in great detail, but sometime later I actually uh, discovered that it was Adrian who, who put this video together. A Adrian does um, some, some really good videos. This is actually the introductory one. Uh, that you can go to. It's, 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 it's very short, actually. This one's only a, a five-minute one. Um, but Adrian does a far better job of, of, of taking people through the steps. He's also got lots of others that we can work with. Mm. Okay. Um, I think Jace will be putting these up, so these links will be there for, for, for people to explore themselves. Oh. Okay, now the interesting thing for me was when I discovered the chart and I actually started getting into uh, more of these um, areas, I discovered that the charts weren't actually working for me. Now you might, you might have noticed my accent a little bit. I, I, I don't have a very strong accent. It's, it's British, yeah, that's right. Um, but I, I actually have a, 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 a slight regional northern accent. And so a lot of the, 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 the work that I was looking at when I started to use the chart showed um, a lot of uh, structures that I was supposed to be using. For example, this one. Now, this, this one here is, is, for example, is, is, is glass. Whereas naturally, I found myself, because of my, my, my thank you, Fatima, <laughs> um, I, I actually found I was using glass a lot more. I, I, another one sort of came up was, was structures like this, that Dexter is my dog, by the way. <laughs> so actually saying something like, Dexter needs a bath or bath. Again, for me, um, 
the, the thing that sort of stood out is a, a, a lot of, even the British English charts were, were not reflecting me. Now, that, that's actually quite important as, as, as a teacher. Um, what, what, one of my, my favourite quotes I've just put up, that this is, is from uh, Judy Gill, but Judy is, is an amazing uh, teacher herself, has done some great work um, here. Um, and, and one of the things um, I, I really got from her was action, uh, accent reduction. Now, she here was actually talking about students, but um, I, I actually took this uh, for myself, and I said, well, look, I'm, I'm in a classroom, I'm, I'm teaching. I, I, I don't want to change my accent um, to meet the requirements of a chart. So it became quite important that I, I started to point out to people that, I'll, I'll just pull this one, um, that there was different thought forms that, that, that came through um, but this was this was the one that um, I naturally use. But there will be some British speakers um, and some American speakers as well who might use alternative forms. And again, I, I, I realised that students found things like this to be quite fascinating. Of course, I'll just put those out. Ha. Uh, this this is uh, Judy and uh, another video actually uh, slightly more advanced than some of Adrian's stuff, um, but it's an amazing uh, video to to get a sense of of who she is. Uh, the the seven concepts that she she uses uh, are, are quite in, in important as well. So may, maybe at the end of the session, pop in and, and have a look at this video from Judy as well. Okay, but what it did show me, and again, a bit of a discovery, is that obviously because I'm, I'm, I'm British, I, I've been working with the British chart, but there was um, also the American chart. Yep, yep, Sylvia, so many Britishes. And I think, um, Sylvia, I, I think originally you're Irish, yeah, that's right. Um, I, I, I had lots of Irish friends who had very similar problems when they started to use the, the, the British chart, that the vowels themselves don't match. So I think one of the one of the things that come through <laughs> really non RP neither am I <laughs> yeah um, and, and and I think that's the thing that comes true it, it's very important for us to be true to our own accent um, I, I I like Judy I'm I'm not a fan of accent reduction at all I think accents are beautiful my my wife has has a beautiful Turkish accent when she speaks English. Um, and, I, and I wouldn't want her to get rid of it, actually. <laughs> but again, in, in, in terms of our own preferences, it's important to be aware of the, the, the kind of things um, that we do. All right, I, I, I've got my, my story went on a lot longer <laughs> than it should have done, actually. Um, so let's, let, let's come back to, to this. I mean, I, I actually took you through a, a few of the techniques that I was using to, to help my... Um, Nelly, really? No, no. Yeah, the accents we have are beautiful. We should all make sure we keep them. <laughs> um, okay, so com coming back, let's um, let's have a look at this one. I mean, I I I was trying to tell you about my my, my own technique. So I guess maybe I'd throw this question in the in, in the pot. Is a lot of the the, the techniques and, and processes I was going through to learn IPA are they are, are they the kind of you could do with with your students as well. Are they the kind of things you could do with your yourself? Um, okay. Oh, actually, I'm, I'm going to step out of this for a bit. There, there's still some good chats going on there about accents. <laughs> a Scouse accent. Hmm. Okay. Fatima talks about, about about mixing, yeah, yeah. Now, yes, yeah, I, li I like that idea of the, the 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 personal accent. I mean, we we have our own personal accent. I think I think that that's one of the things that comes through. I don't think it's necessarily the point that we we, we should try to pick up somebody else's accent. If if we're if we're focused on on communication, um, accent shouldn't really matter that much at all, yeah. Okay. All right, Jace, how much time have we got? Oh, God, time is flying. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm going to jump ahead because... Hello? Uh, we, we can add a few minutes on, I think... Uh, not I think. 
I know people would benefit from being able to do a little Q&A with you. So if you're okay, mm-hmm. um, I'm going to add 10 minutes on. So if, if you can finish maybe in the next six, seven minutes, eight minutes, right? Okay. Yeah, okay. Right. Mm-hmm. If not, we can always add more. People are usually okay. uh, appreciative of that. They can always leave and check out the recording later. So no problem. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Well, let's let, let let's let's jump that one for a bit. I I, I came across this uh, poster um, from from atbreak.com, and 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 I think for me this this, this kind of summarised um, what 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 IPA is all around uh, is all about. I mean, I, I I don't necessarily think it is a good idea to to sit down and, and digest five hundred pages. I think t- taking the kind of approach that that I did when I was much younger before the internet. Uh, came through um, was, was very important for for me as a teacher. I, I struggled in the same way that my my, my students uh, struggled, and it is it is recognizing that you know we, we we have to get to grips with with our own struggles. Um, we have to learn from our own mistakes. We, we we have to share those mistakes with others so that we can uh, come up with new solutions as well. Um, and 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 that was what what, what I think. Uh, came to to sort of personify my journey with 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 IPA was that um, I learned by doing it. I learned by making mistakes, um, but I also learned with my students. All right, Jace, I'm going to jump to the, the 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 next one. All right, now this one uh, was was a slide we did talk about. Um, in our session, and I think that, that this is where I wanted us to, to maybe get a little bit more practical, have a look at a few things that, that sort of come up. So I'm going to throw this one back to to, to you guys. Um, I know some of you have said you haven't used it yet, uh, but those of you that are are actually using it, um, give, give us a few ideas of the things that you're actually doing. Thank you, Halina. I like your attitude too. Thank you. <laughs> okay. All right, let's have a, a, a look. Let's get some ideas in. How, how, how are you guys actually using IPA yourself with students? Yeah, what, what kind of, of activities are your favorite activities? What kind of things work? What kind of things matter? Okay, I can see lots of people. Yeah. Always putting the board. Yes, I, 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 I still do that. I always keep the chart there. Mm-hmm. Okay, using exceptions, absolutely. The sound posters in class, absolutely. Classifying. Um, yeah. I, I, I think I, a couple of people were saying I, I still don't use it. It, it can be confusing. Um, I, I, I think you're true. If, if we try, if, if we try and you know do everything all at once, I, I think that's why I was trying to show you the process I went through, in, in introducing bits of it, trying to integrate those things into what we do. I think is a, 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 a very practical strategy to use. Yeah. Um, Nelly there, I've never used it. Okay. With the high school kids. Yeah. Um, as I said, I've, I've used it with lots of uh, different age groups, adults as well. Um, but again, it's, it's that idea of the tool making it visible. Yeah. Okay. Musical sounds, games, yeah, I know, I know, Jace is big on that, and a lot of you are big on those things there. Uh, okay, so Nelly is using APA, yes, uh-huh. IPA, International Phonetic Alphabet, yeah, there you go. Tom Twisters, definitely Maha, yeah, okay. Facebook groups, okay, audio, video. So, I mean, you can see that um, that there's a, there's a whole range of, of, of activities that we can use. Ah, Babel, using films with subtitles. I've, I've never actually done that. I, yeah, that, that, that's a great idea. Yeah. Okay. Well, look. Okay. Well, well, one, one of the things that um, I've actually tried to do is, remember we talked earlier on, often it's the time issue that comes up. So what, what, one of the things that I, I've often done is, is kind of look at the things that we normally do 
in our, 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 our classrooms. Obviously, we do a lot of work with, with skills, grammar, and vocabulary. And, 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 and the two questions I often ask myself is, if, if I want students to get better, where, where can I do some targeted uh, training when I do a lot of these areas? And also the other side of the, of, of the coin is, where, where can I integrate IPA into what I normally do? Now, obviously, speaking activities, there's a lot of, of work where we can sort of integrate. Um, vocabulary is, um, is another one um, that I, I, I obviously use IPA a lot, particularly for introducing it. Yeah? But there's, there's absolutely no reason why we can't use it in uh, other types of lessons, definitely listening, um, even speaking activities that we can do. Yeah? Okay. Let's just pull. Um, a, a, a couple of you did mention um, the, the, the minimal pairs, similar sounds that come through. Now, the, the, these are actually great, um, great activities for raising awareness and focusing on the difficulties that, that, that students have. Um, and they can be quite, quite good fun, too. Um, what, what, what I've got here, a, a really great resource, again, because we said we, we often run out of, of, of time. <laughs> uh, we don't have enough time to do them, is, is this one here, English Club. There, there's actually hundreds of these ones all, already. That's one of the best uh, ready-to-go resources that we've, we, we've sort of seen with, with minimal pairs. So that, that is actually a good one. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think the, the English Club one, uh, Gordana, they, they, they have lots of long and short vowel sounds, um, lots of the, the, the consonant sounds that we, we sort of do as well. Um, but it's, it's, it's a great resource, and, and the reason why I recommend that is because it, it sort of saves time. Yeah. Uh, tongue twisters. I think a few of you had noticed tongue twisters. What, what, what I'd like to do, just have a quick look here. If two witches were watching two watches, which witch would watch which watch? Wow, looks like Tony, Professor Tony's. Um, Tony, you need to go back and come back in, my friend. Is he paused? How about me? Can you see and hear me? I just need to hear if I'm okay here. Okay, so something with Tony's connection. And hopefully he'll heed, heed the advice that he so often hears here. <laughs> go out and come back in. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but you can see and hear me. It's important that I know that just to make sure that it's not a bigger problem. And hopefully uh, he'll come back in the link. So Ana Cristina Skybox, when you say there went the sound, how about my sound? Okay. All right. Good. What we'll do while we're waiting for uh, Tony is look at some questions. Uh, thank you, Dr. Jigsaw. He'll be back. But what questions? And I can jot them down. I like having them in the chat, but I'll also sort of jot them down so I can uh, ask him uh, when he comes back in. Any qu any questions you have? Anything you're interested in asking him? <laughs> Dora's like, you see, everything's wrong with the sound. <laughs> yeah, I just think it's isolated issues. Exit and come back. Exit and come back. <laughs> uh, anybody have a question for Tony that I can ask? This is kind of boring talking about the uh, sound problems. <laughs> Remember, people are watching this later and they're reading the chat and be like, sounds off, sounds off. How about a question for our, our uh, presenter? <laughs> no questions? Does he have a blog? Oh boy, does he have her. He has an incredible blog. <laughs> so I'll ask him about that and he can. Uh, he can tell us about it. Anything else? Any other questions? That's true. If you Google his name, you'll find the blog. But I would love for him to talk about the blog uh, because it's it's a it's a really special blog, actually. 
Yes, to Tony, we can't hear you. Uh, there's some issue on your end. And I'm taking questions. If you can hear us. Okay. Ah, here's one. What is the role of IPA in teaching ESL to semi-literate adults? That's very interesting. Hmm, I like that question. I'll just collect questions here while we're waiting. Curious, Tony. But I think what happened is the tongue twisters, Tony Gerd, did I say Burr? My tongue is getting twisted up. I think the tongue twisters just twisted his uh, internet connection right up. <laughs> um, any other questions? I really like these two questions. And if we can't get Tony's uh, sound uh, and video back in, we'll just uh, ask him these afterwards uh, in the chat. Any other questions for Tony? Adrian Underhill, who uh, Tony mentioned, is really amazing. Um, really good links, yes. And we'll put them up afterwards. We'll post them. We'll post them. Tony is controlling the PowerPoint with no video or audio, or it seems chat ability, unless he's, uh, he's too focused on that, that he's not chatting with us. The slides, by the way, will be available after the class, so we'll put them up. Tony will be back. Yes, he'll be back. Um, but uh, yeah, so you don't have to worry, and this is true of all of our presentations, you don't have to worry uh, about catching everything in the recording, although you can pause recordings and write down links, but those slides will be back. I'm glad you enjoyed the class, Graciela. Luckily, uh, Tony froze after he'd really hit us with his big ideas. And uh, what was really great about this presentation, uh, and, and, and others have been good too, but Tony really, really got the interaction going, I felt, uh, with all of you teachers. So that's really nice. It really felt like a, a presentation, but a, a, a dialogue. Uh, and that dialogue will continue in the pre-class questions on the course page. Yeah. And um, any other questions for Tony? I've got to, one, one about his blog, which I know he'll enjoy answering. He has a really great blog. And one uh, about what about adults who are semi-literate? Um, if they've got literacy issues, what happens with IPA? What happens with pronunciation? How would you approach that? Right? Any other question? No? Questions for Tony? Go in once. Going twice. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Nelly, for that link. As you're checking out the slide here, really great slides. And if you if you didn't know, you found out today. Tony Kerr is the king of images of pictures. He's the image king. <laughs> and Anna Christina, with whom he works, and she just left, but uh, she said he's the bestest with the images, he really is. She's also very good with the images. So they're the, the Anna Christina Skybox and Tony Gurr are the uh, image king and queen. So I don't know if Tony can hear us. Nice that he's got the PowerPoint <laughs> controls. Yeah. All right. Well, we've got a couple minutes left. Um, thank you, Sir Tom. That's Thomas Hodges. Let's do a little recognition here of some of our facilitators. Thomas Hodges uh, from, from Britain in Venezuela. He is one of our esteemed facilitators. Uh, who else do we see here today? Uh, Youssef Tamir is here. He is one of our esteemed facilitators. Gordana is here from Serbia. She is one of our esteemed facilitators. 
Ahmed is here from Yemen, facilitator and esteemed. <laughs> They're all esteemed. I'll just let Tony show these amazing slides while uh, I recognize some of these wonderful folks that are here uh, helping both presenters and participants in ELT techniques. Sylvia is, and Dr. Nelly, they are presenters. They are also coordinating this move with me. The three of us are doing it, but they are also facilitators, as am I. Great. Making sure I haven't left facilitator and you haven't shouted out here, please come in and say hello. We have very dedicated participants that are kind of almost facilitators. This is how the facilitators end up being facilitators usually. You know, people like... Uh, Fatima here and Slavka and, you know, who are essentially being facilitators with all the help they're getting people. Oh, there's Demetrius in Greece. He's more the facilitator. Demetrius is the uh, creator of Club EFL, which we're using in this MOOC and which we will really be using in our MOOC in March uh, as we are uh, tweaking it and getting it really set up as an awesome, awesome place as a result of your feedback. I'm frozen in New Jersey? You mean my image is frozen? It's not that cold here. Six seconds, 10 seconds on the clock. Bye, we love you, peace.